Products in this video were provided to the author to do a review. All opinions are 100% authors and authors alone. Hey guys, this is your friend Iggy back again. So in this video, we're going to be doing an unboxing, overview, and product usage of the Sovereign USB Type-C aluminum enclosure for M.2 NVMe SSDs. Now, this, I would have to say, mind you, I haven't opened it just yet. I would have to say is an awesome concept because you just bought a brand new M.2 NVMe SSD. It's the fastest thing around, but tomorrow a bigger, better, and faster NVMe M.2 SSD drive comes out and well, you just kind of have to throw it away or maybe put it in your drawer in case you get another motherboard and you can build up another system or you know, you're upgrading from a regular SSD and then you get an M.2 and maybe you have another M.2, but regardless, this serves a ton of great purposes. And I'm gonna go over through a few of them with you here. But uh, first off, let's open this up real quick and let's see what's inside. All right, here we go. Again, the Sovereign USB Type-C aluminum enclosure for M.2 NVMe SSDs. This is USB 3.1 Gen 2. Well, and actually, you can see in front of the box, USB 3.1 enclosure for NVMe, and then it shows the actual enclosure itself. USB Type-C M.2 SSD, we can see that right up here. Along the back, kind of goes over the same, then goes over the package contents, features, system requirements, and warning, big warning, this is only compatible with M-Key M.2 PCIe NVMe SSDs. It is not compatible with B-Key SSDs or SATA based or the M-Key M.2 SSD PCIe AHCI based. All right, so definitely important there. And let's go ahead, pull this guy out of here. I cannot, all right. I try not to break these things, but all right, there's no way I was going to get that out of there. <clears throat> all right, so before we get to the drive, here we have the quick installation guide. Kind of just goes over opening up the drive itself, inserting the M.2, screwing it in, and then closing it up. Okay. Sovereign has you covered. All right, the their uh, warranty and to extend it for two years, got to register it. So definitely remember that. And then you know give them a call if you have issues. Okay. Oh wow, this is cool. Okay, so it brings a screwdriver. That is a very nice thing there. Okay, and then here we have looks like rubber feet, or maybe this is where it stands on or where it lays down on and then some screws. Okay, so then here we have the USB cable and uh, it's actually kind of nice the way they did this. They wanted to make sure you had everything you needed. Okay, so this is the part that goes connected to the computer or you can use this, a USB Type-C connection if you don't want to use USB 3.0 or 2.0, you can just plug this in. See, every time, plug this in there, and then you can use this guy instead. And then, of course, this is the one that goes connected to the drive itself or to the enclosure. And then we have right over here, and by the way, this is packaged not only very tightly, but this is rubber, so great for shipping purposes. Or should I say foam, I'm sorry. Great for shipping purposes. Wow, and this is not very light, but this is actually pretty small. So for example, this is a regular SSD. You can see that size, it's a little thick. It's probably, yep, about two SSDs thick, but you could fit this in your pocket, all right? so. And actually, you could probably use this as a thumb drive as well, but of course, you'd have to carry this cable everywhere. So, you go ahead, open it up real quick. 
with, oh, well, I didn't even need to do that. All right, so I'm gonna grab that M.2 PCIe SSD. Just drop it in here. Okay, and then I'll go ahead and screw it in and grab one of these screws. All right, and then, so if, if you can see it there, let's see. Well, this is not a uh, Phillips head or anything, so I'll just drop it in there. It's probably not magnetized. And then I'll just screw it in. So the reason they included the screwdriver is because it's not a standard Phillips head, but still great that they included one. Okay, so now I'll go ahead and put this, please peel off this mask after application. Okay, so there we go. So this also acts as a heat sink. So, so pretty awesome. So I just drop that in there. Okay, and it, see how it's, it's totally in there. So now I'll just go ahead and take these pieces of uh, plastic off. Okay, now we have the rubber feet here, and then we can just drop the screws in here. And they even included one extra just in case. So now, aside from the, you know, just seeing if the drive picks up, because, yeah, a big whoop. I'm also going to test the transfer speeds to see what the difference is from onboard M.2 SSD to this. And I'm also going to try a few other tests. I'm going to do... And then I'm also going to see if this is bootable. If I can put my regular M.2 PCIe SSD or this one, install Windows on it and boot from it. So let me go ahead and test that now and I'll come right back to you guys. So you guys just don't listen. As I said before, you cannot use the AHCI SSD. You have to use the M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD. See, so this one won't work. You guys saw me putting it in there. It was a test for you guys. Honestly, I wasn't paying attention. So, I was using the Patriot drive, which was a great drive, or is a great drive, I should say. But, actually, I was supposed to use this uh, Western Digital 512 gig PCIe NVMe M.2 black drive. This is an NVMe PCIe SSD. So, You'll notice the big difference here is you can tell this guy right here only has that one little notch whereas this guy has two notches. So that this way you'll know you can use this one but not this one. It has nothing to do with the fact that it's Western Digital versus Patriot but anyway. So in my testing uh, for example uh, I have all the scores up here on my laptop but and this is actually the laptop I tested this on, on the USB-C port. And because it's USB-C, that also works as USB 3.0, I went ahead and tested both for you guys. So for example, using ADO, we can see here the M.2, and I also tested it on my desktop, but we can see here the M.2 on my desktop, of course, killed everything. The scores were tremendous, kind of to be expected, because it's going straight through the motherboard. There is no pass-through. The USB 3 and USB Type-C, they're going through a pass-through. Putting the M.2 aside, we can see the USB-C trumped the USB-C to 3.0 conversion, again, because there is that space in between, that extra adapter that you just don't need, so of course that'll reduce it. You can see here, though, that even though the M.2 SSD is faster than the USB-C, we can see on just a few of these, for example, on the 64 meg write, the speeds were almost identical. It seemed that on all the writes on this drive came very close to each other. The reads, a different story, but that kind of shows you this actually, Sabrent made a pretty decent enclosure. Now, jumping over to Crystal Dismark, not the same story uh, across anything. Again, M.2 was still on top, but then we jumped to USB-C to USB 
with the adapter. We can see on, on 4KIB Q1T1Write, on Q32Ti right, on Q32 Ti right, on Q32 Ti read, and just about, not all of them, but the lower capacity ones, which are typically, even though they're very small, on anything, be it a mechanical, an SSD, an M.2 SSD, on a laptop, on a desktop, on everything, the smaller file sizes, they take longer to transfer, and then we can see, though, that on the larger ones, for example, on the sequential Q32 Ti T1 write and the sequential Q32 Ti read, the USB Type-C went faster than the USB Type-C to USB 3.0. So that is pretty cool the way that worked out. We can see that the enclosure didn't hinder the performance too much. It did a little bit especially going back to Ada where we can see the read speeds, they were kind of affected almost cut in half almost exactly. Uh, but still at this point, this is a portable drive, so you may not be expecting a desktop or a laptop performance coming from this portable drive. The cool thing is, it is portable, you have uh, fast media of, you know, could be a few terabytes even, that fit right in here, and it goes anywhere you go. So that is pretty cool, and especially with its built-in thermal pad here to help keep it cool. Using it, it did heat up a little tiny bit, but nothing bad. One very curious thing, and this is not this guy's fault. I did also try to make this a bootable drive, and then I came up across this error. So I'll try to get more information on that one. I don't know if it was just a limitation on this BIOS for this laptop that wouldn't let me do it, or if it was a limitation on the enclosure itself. But anyway, again, Iggy showing you the Sabrent M.2 PCIe NVMe enclosure. Uh, pretty cool, I do like it. Um, being that it's USB Type-C, it was kind of uh, not the greatest because while it, the standard's been out for a while, it's not fully fleshed out or not everything has it, but the fact that you can use USB 3.0 and it also works on USB 2.0 is pretty awesome. Uh, it would be better if it worked on the AHCI SATA drive as well, as well as the NVMe M.2 SSD, but it is what it is. Chances are you're probably gonna have an NVMe M.2 SSD anyway, so it's cool, you don't have to throw it away or just tuck it away somewhere. I'll use it later and later never happens. I got a whole garage full of laters in my office and here I collect a lot. But anyway, I think it's pretty cool. It's affordable, so that makes it better. And the fact that it is aluminum, it's pretty awesome as well. And the fact that they include the screwdriver so you don't have to find this weird angle anywhere. But anyway, just my quick or kind of quick information on this drive. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Yeah, yeah. see you guys. Products in this video were provided to the author to do a review. All opinions are 100% authors and authors alone.